So electrochemistry. I don't know if you how much of this you remember from Chem 1401, but we balanced redox reactions in acidic or what solution? Basic, Basic right? We're not going to do that, but we need to remember a few things. But what was the big deal? Well, electrochemistry, whenever a reaction is really driven by this transfer of electrons between reactants, one reactant has to accept them, the other reactant has to produce them, I guess, right? So it's, they can be really powerful reactions. And they're all over the place. What runs a, a battery or a lot of little sensors operate on non-intrusive, too, not operate on electrochemical reactions. When apples turn brown, that's an electrochemical reaction. All right? And you can kind of slow it down by making it a little acidic, adding some lemon juice. OK. Here's a review. This isn't in your notes. This is just to see if we can remember this stuff. To keep track of these electrons, we had some rules that allowed us to determine the oxidation state of an, el of an element in a compound. So see if you remember how to do this. And these oxidation states, all they did is just allowed us to do electric bookkeeping. Make sure we didn't produce more electrons than were actually produced or something, right? The, ele the electrons that are produced has to be the exact same number that are consumed or react with the other reactant. Anyway, oxidation state of oxygen in a compound, summer, is always what? It's Fe2O3. I don't know. When you pick a compound with oxygen in it, what was the oxidation state of oxygen? Negative 2. Good memory. OK. Oxidation state of an element in its natural state. Vanessa, oxygen in its natural state is O2. Uh, Iron in its natural state is Fe solid, right? It's whatever the element is in its natural state. All those guys have the same oxidation number. It's always zero. 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 When we add the oxidation state of all the atoms present in a compound or ion, carbonate, water. I don't know, aluminum oxide. There's a, you know, there's a gazillion compounds you could write are ions. You add up the oxidation state of every single element in there, in that compound or ion, you always get what? The charge. The charge. What's the charge for this one? Negative 2. The charge for this one? 0. 0. Negative 1. So. I don't know, total charge or something. Or the charge of the ion or the charge of the ion or the compound. Okay. Oxidation and reduction. Some more terminology. I have not seen this in a movie. They should have it there though. All those cowboy shows. The thermite reaction. Can't weld. Out there in the middle of the plains and you, how do they join these railroad tracks? Thermite reaction. Must be highly what? Exothermic or endothermic? What, Mari? Exo. Otherwise, it can't melt the iron in the first place and make them stick together. So it's got to be really exothermic. So let's see if I can find it here. And they use some terminology that we're going to talk about. 
oxidizing agent, reducing agent, that sort of thing. But let's see if we can, in order to identify and use those terms, we need to figure out the oxidation state of the elements in this reaction. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but you'll see why in a little bit here. Oh, Ramiro, on that reactant side, what's the oxidation state of an element over there? Do you recognize any? Zero for aluminum, right? In fact, I should have a S down there for solid on all this stuff. This stuff is all solids. Oh, keep going. You're on a roll there. And what? Negative two for? Roll. It has to be for one element. Fe2 for oxygen. And I think what I did is I circled my answers here. Now, there's a reason for circling them. Because how many oxygens do you have? Three. So it comes out to be a negative six, really, is what you have. Iron had better come out to be a positive what? Yeah, you're right, your head. But you're right, six. Because the whole thing has to add to be the charge. If you 203 is zero. So you better get zero out of it. So six and negative six. Well, that means each iron had better be what then? Plus three. And that's the number I'm going to circle. So iron's three, oxygen's negative two, aluminum is zero. Those are the oxidation states for all the elements on the reactant side. How about the product side? AJ, what's the oxidation state of something on the product side? Iron would be, not iron isn't negative two. What's negative two? Oxygen's, oxygen's negative two. I think it's the same math again, right? Three times negative two is negative six. Aluminum has to be a positive six. Each aluminum has to be positive three. So it looks like aluminum went from what number to what number? Its oxidation state. It went from zero to three. Oh, we didn't do iron yet. Iron went from three to zero. OK. So some terminology here, Mari. When an element gets oxidized in a reaction, its oxidation state, what? Do you remember? In fact, if you're not sure, do this one first. This one should be first. Let's let her do this one. When an element gets reduced in a reaction, its oxidation state gets yeah, it gets more negative. Reduced makes more sense, right? It's getting smaller, gets more negative, gets smaller in magnitude, or more negative, more negative. Yeah, not small. It'd be more negative. Going from a negative three to a negative six or something. It's getting more negative. That means the top one, when an element gets oxidized, everybody uh, gets more positive. So oxidized means it gets more positive. Oxidizing and reducing agents are always, Lauren, they're always what? A 50-50 shot. Yeah, you got it. Buy a lottery ticket today. Your odds were good at that one, though. Oxidizing agents always get, you remember this? They always get reduced. Reducing agents always get oxidized. Always skipped a question here. Oh, oxidizing agents and reducing agents are always, yeah, this stuff is always reactants. OK. Going through all that, we should be able to pick out the reducing agent. Eric? Now, if you're looking at this right, you should have a 50-50 shot of getting this. Because you better pick a what? You better pick a reactant. He said aluminum got oxidized. Right? He 
You see, you see that? Zero to positive three. So if aluminum got oxidized, it is the reducing agent. Right? Oh, that'd be this one. Yeah. So you'd have Al solid. Now, you don't have to figure this one out. The answer has to be what for oxidizing agent? Has to be what? Has to be the other reactant, the Fe2O3. But you should prove it. Oxidizing agents get reduced. So did this compound get reduced? Did, it, did the oxygen change? No, he's always negative 2. But the iron went from plus 3 to 0. So it worked. Yeah, it got reduced. OK. Right, unbalanced half reactions. So we're not really interested in balancing redox reactions in acidic and basic solutions. We just want to pick out the half reactions. I don't know if you remember balancing, but it was going the whole route. You'd line them up, and then you'd, you'd add them all up. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to add them up and get a final answer. We're just divvying them up. Jessica, what would be one of the half reactions? Fe2O3 going to, going to Fe. Well, I wouldn't say 2 Fe, because they want it unbalanced. So don't even start balancing it. Just leave it. And then the other, Monica, half reaction would be, two not two, just aluminum, aluminum going to, yeah. There's our two unbalanced half reactions. This is all we need. Nice for doing these problems. Two types of electrochemical cells. The first one is illustrated with a pickle light. So what would happen if you plug a pickle into the wall? A pickle is incorporated into a simple electrical circuit. The forks provide contact between the pickle and the power source. Alternating current will be passed through the circuit. So there's the first type of electrochemical cell. And then there's a, another one. That was like a, what do you call those things where they put people in to chain them down and kill them? The other one is a lemon battery. It illustrates the other type of electrochemical cell, this one. This lemon battery is related to the zinc copper cell. You can build this battery from lemons, galvanized nails, and pennies. How much electrical potential is generated by a three lemon battery? Okay, you see that number? Which battery, I don't know if you see the decimal point, it's right there at the 1.558. Which battery size has 1.5 volts? Does anyone know? You guys don't read the small little print on these things? It's the AA battery, the skinny AA battery. So they had how many lemons? All right, you might want to make a AA battery. That's about, that would work. OK, let's take a close look at this. There's two types of electrochemical cells. One of them, Caroline, happened on its own, just naturally. The other one, you had a force. Which one's spontaneous? Which one's natural? Happens on its own. You couldn't stop it, actually. Was it the uh, lemon battery, or was it the pickle light? Yeah. Anybody help her? What, which one would? 
lemon, right? You just hook these lemons up, put some screws in there, jam in some pennies, connect it up, and you had 1.5 volts. Right? So they call that a galvanic. A galvanic cell is something that just happens naturally. All those alkaline batteries, they're all galvanic cells. They're not going to last forever because you know those reactants going to react and are going to all be gone sooner or later. They're going to be consumed. There's not an infinite supply of reactants, but non-galvanic, you have to force it to go, like the pickle light. They also call it electrolytic. So I guess they also call galvanic voltaic. So voltaic and galvanic happen on their own. What are the half reactions in the lemon battery? Now, I don't know how you'd know this. I think uh, what's so special about the nails and screws that you're supposed to use if you build a deck or fencing? They're coated with, anybody know? They're silver looking, zinc. That's one of the half reactions. Zinc solid going to zinc ions. The other half reaction, oh, they jam some pennies in there. It'll work a lot better if they use pre-19, I don't know, 48 or something, 54 pennies, because they have a lot more of this in there. Copper. Copper. Copper's really expensive now. So here's the other half reaction. So those are the half reactions. What would it look like? if we separated the lemon battery half reactions into two different containers. So right now, I mean, everything's jammed together in the lemon. But what if you could actually separate out these half reactions and not have everything jammed together at once? What would it look like? Our galvanic cell animation here. A galvanic cell consists of two half reactions connected by a salt bridge and an external wire. In this example, a zinc metal electrode is oxidized to zinc ions at the anode, and Cu2 positive is reduced to form copper metal at the cathode. If the two half reactions are connected through a voltmeter, we can measure the electromotive force for the reaction. When connected to a light bulb, the current of electrons flowing through the wire causes the bulb to glow. The anions and cations flow through the salt bridge to compensate for the change in the charge caused by the electron flow. All right, did you, did you catch all that? A ah, I wanted to pause it here. OK, so it doesn't look too bad. I mean, they have the, the silver zinc, right? The silver zinc strip. And they've got a cop, hunk of copper, copper solution, copper ions, zinc ions, right? And these little guys going from here, lighting up the bulb, going down here. What were these supposed to be? going through a wire, the, what, Monica? What goes, what travels through the wire, completes the circuit? Electricity, electrons, right? So you have electrons going through here. So that, that's kind of, they're being produced over here. The reason why they're being produced over there is because of that half reaction. Look at this guy. If you're going to finish you know, make them nice and balanced, what would you have to do? Add two negative electrons, right? You have to have the same charge on both sides. So that zinc, that solid is dissolving. That little, that solid hunk of zinc, well, it looks like it's dissolving, it's reacting, right? It's disappearing, producing zinc ions, right? Then on the other side, the other side, those electrons are reacting with the copper ions and making copper solid. So over here, ah, where'd it go? Over here, you're making copper solid. So you're going to have this nice, shiny new copper here. These copper ions are depositing onto here. You don't need, this thing doesn't need to be a nice, hunk, expensive piece of copper. You can have anything there, any metal. Because it's just going to deposit copper on there, nice shiny copper. But you could make a copper-coated quarter, literally. You just stick a quarter on a like, little clip, put it in the solution, and have it connected instead of this piece. Make a copper-coated quarter. 
It looked like it came from the mint. Okay. So those copper ions react with electrons. Okay, so we have what it looks like. Oh, we didn't quite finish the story, though. Someone should tell me. What is this thing doing there? They call it the salt bridge, but pfft, what do you need it for? It's like a big hunk of, it's not doing anything, right? Just sitting there. What is it doing? Did you ever try to light a light with a battery? Are you playing with little wires and things? Well, if you ever did, or make anything light up, or make any little motor work, any little electric circuit you want to try building, you always have to ha make a... Kind of, yeah. A circuit or a circle. You have to have a complete circle. Otherwise you don't, otherwise you just broke the circuit, electrons won't, nothing will flow. If you don't have this there, everything stops. These electrons stop, Voltage goes to zero, nothing. Everything stops if you take this salt bridge out. And what's weird is what's coming out of the bottom of this salt bridge? Is it electrons? They call it a salt. So there's what inside there? That starts with an I. Ions. Some ions are what charge? Positive. Others are negative. So if you have, well, it'll look better when you start drawing a picture, but they're going to be flowing. And our f the physicists say that, come on, guys, anything that has a charge and it moves, that's current. That's electricity. You don't have to have electrons. Anything. Okay, anything that's a charge and moves. So if you have current, this is completing the circuit. That's what it's there for. Okay. So that's what it would look like. By convention, the oxidation half reaction are al always occurs in the left cell volta voltaic cell diagrams. So they always want the oxidation half reaction to be on that left-hand side. So then electrons will always flow from like here, left to right. Exactly. Because this, these guys, this is the left side. He's producing the electrons. So they're going to come up here. They can go from left to right. If everyone, that way, if everyone hooks up the little voltmeter, everyone reads 1.5 volts instead of some people reading negative 1.5 volts, right? Having the leads switched around. So everyone has the same convention. Okay. Let's draw a conventional voltaic cell diagram for the lemon battery. Okay, there it is. We have to have, I'm going to scribble that half reaction down. Zinc goes to zinc solid, so I know what to draw. Zinc goes to zinc, sorry, zinc solid goes to zinc ions, right? That was, that's what was going on over here. The other electrons were reacting instead of being produced. Okay. So we have our two containers. We need some zinc solution. We need some copper solution. And we need our strip of zinc. It's a little hunk of zinc solid. Now, we did not need the copper solid, though, right? Because, look, the copper solid is being produced. But they had copper, and they're fine. But we could use any metal. We don't need copper. <sighs> Cu, right? Fine. But they did, so I don't care. That'll work. And then you connect the guys. Sometimes when they draw these, they put a little V. For what? Volts or a voltmeter, something to measure volts with. Okay. I'm missing the what bridge? Salt, Salt bridge. So Let's see if we can draw him in. Kind of. Let's, let's, let's say that it's a sodium chloride salt bridge. So I have what ions in there? Na with a what charge? Plus. And I have Cl with a negative. Okay. 
Which ion is flowing out? Which ion is flowing out right here? Is it the Na plus or is it the Cl minus? Now what's what's coming out? Realize this is your half reaction. Zinc going to zinc plus two. Right? So that stuff, stuff's getting kicked off, going to zinc plus two. You think you're getting a lot of it. You're getting more and more positive charge building up in there. So what's going to come out of the salt ridge to even things out? The CL negative. So the chloride is coming out on this side. That means what's coming out over here? The sodium. Because look at, look at this reaction. This reaction, Cu pluses are disappearing. They're depositing onto here, making this nice shiny gold, nice shiny copper. So since the positive charge is disappearing, you, gotta, you better regenerate it. Because you're not going to spontaneously generate this huge positive or negative charge somewhere. OK. Oh, and they very often want us to draw the direction of electron flow. So draw an arrow. From what side to what side? Left to right. Electron flow or direction, whatever you want to say. Okay, and I think that's about everything that's there. But I guess it would kind of not be fun. Every single homework question was like this. That'd be it's gonna take you hours. So cell notation, shorthand notation. To write, so you don't have to, if you know the shorthand notation, you don't have to draw the nice big picture. So they're going to ask you to do it both ways in the homework. So what does this shorthand notation look like? All we're going to do is write, well, first let's put in the salt bridge. Does anybody know what they use for the salt bridge? Something that I can draw. That. That's your salt bridge. So on the left-hand side, we have the zinc and the zinc ions. And if they told us the concentration of the zinc, 0.2 molar, we'll write 0.2 molar in there. Okay. And you can very often they're separated by commas or something, but what really matters and what you separate these two with is the state. What are the states of matter? Solid, liquid, gas. So if they're in different states, you're supposed to draw a vertical line. I'm so lazy. What state am I supposed to be putting under for all ions? AQ. I'm just, I'm just lazy. But we should. Then you recognize, oh, S, you know, change state. The subscripts change. Right? From S to AQ, change state. OK. The, uh, the other side. You'd write what, then what? Following the same format. Cu plus 2, a line, and then Cu solid. OK. See if you remember this. Which one do you call the anode? Which one do you call the cathode? Left side is anode. So. If you can remember that, great. I, I can't remember that. All I can remember is anode is oxidation because they both start with a vowel. That's what everyone remembers things differently. That's how I remember it. Anode and oxidation both start with a vowel. So this really is my anode. Just so you know, what do they call this side then? Cathode. Yeah. Okay, so that's a shorthand notation. A lot easier. Anode is where oxidation occurs. Produces the electrons. Iron reacts spontaneously with copper two ions. We're missing a plus sign in here. Notice that. Obtain the half reactions, then describe a voltaic cell using these half reactions. Now, I copied this from the homework, Victoria, just to kind of point out, well, we're, we'll do it, but. What's the answer for this? Is the answer, because they say describe, is the answer, ah, 
go up here. Ah. Wow, it's locked up. Is the answer the shorthand way or the drawing way? It's going to go away. I wish. It's the drawing way. It's the drawing way. They want you to describe means draw it. In fact, you're always going to be drawing it unless it specifically states cell notation. So, so we need to figure out what the half reactions are and then go ahead and draw it. Okay. Wow, he's really messed up. Here we are. Let's go ahead and draw it in. If you're not sure, just ask. Let's see. Don't forget to label electron flow direction. Bonus points show the different ions that are coming out of the salt bridge in each one. So which one did you put on the left-hand side? The iron. Yeah, I need the oxidation half reaction on the, the left-hand side. Yeah. Does this little hunk of metal have to be iron? Or could I use something else? It has to be iron because iron's going to Fe plus 2. The other guy, he don't care. Everyone got it? No problems? How about okay let's just uh, make, see again, here it's, it's much more clear, make a sketch. Well, we don't, let's not do that. But let's do this part. Write the half cell reactions and the overall cell reaction. That's something new. They gave you the notation. Get the over, get the half reactions and the overall cell reaction. Identify what the two half reactions are. Add them up and get the overall half react, overall cell reaction. Let's see if you remember how to do that. Anyone 
not sure. Yeah, 55. Yeah. Oh, you got it, Albert. You got it. You figured it out. So the first half reaction would be what, Victoria? It would be what? What going to what? CD solid going to CD2. And then to balance it, you'd wrote... to the more positive side. Yeah. Right? Because you want it to be the same charge on both sides. I think everyone probably added nickel, going to nickel solid. And then, yeah. No. And they got to be on opposite sides, otherwise you really mess something up. So top one times what? Bottom one times what? Yes, that way you get those electrons to cancel out and add them up. So we'll have three cadmium solids, two nickel threes, goes to three cadmium twos, and two nickel solids. All right? And then they want you to draw it and label anode cathode. You can do all that. Let's see, how about these? So let's just do 52, then we'll call it a day. All right. You recognize that they do not want you to draw the whole thing out. Right? They're just calling it notation. So don't draw the whole thing out. So use the shorthand notation for it. Okay, Alyssa, I'll help you out. I'll give you the salt bridge. What? That's help? No, what would you write on the left-hand side here? The zinc sulfate stuff. Okay. So you're going to write... Yeah. You hear, did you hear, Alyssa? Write the zinc solid first. Now, what's the sulfate doing in there? Do you care? Zinc sulfate. It's just to get the zinc ions in the solution, because there's no bottle of zinc ions that you can put, that you can add anywhere. It has to be an anion and a cation. The sulfate is just a what, is a, just a what ion? There's an S, the technical word for it. S spectator. It's just a spectator ion. You don't care. Okay. So you got the zinc. And you write the solid first, right? Oh, and it's not a comma. It's supposed to be a... Oh, and they told us the concentration, too, didn't they? Shoot. So I got to write 0.2 molar in there. Right. Then the other guy, the cathode, iron 3 chloride. Yeah, so you could write 0.3 molar. You could write you could write iron chloride, FeCl3 if you if you prefer. You could write FeCl3 instead of Fe plus 3. I like writing Fe plus 3 because it's a lot easier to write the half reactions in the next probably in part B of the question or something than Fe solid. <coughs> right. Again, you can write 0.2 molar zinc sulfate. 
and 0.3 molar iron 3 chloride. It's, it's fine. But I like just the ions, because why put in spectators? It gets things confusing. So come by if you have some questions.